Hello everyone. I'd look at, like to look at another equilibrium example here where we're going to strategically take the perpendicular moment arm where we have our, our forces at an angle relative to the pivot point. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at this example and we'll see. A cubic container is at rest on a rough horizontal warehouse floor. If the mass of the container is 20.7 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction is 0.562, determine the minimum horizontal force that must be applied to the top of the container to cause tipping. So the information we have there is that the mass of the box is equal to 20.7 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0 0.562. And we're asked to determine the minimum horizontal force that can be applied or that must be applied to the top of the container to cause it to tip. Let's consider the configuration that we have here and how this, what this is really asking. I could apply a force and let's say I could put it very low on the box and therefore it'd be unlikely to tip. So if I applied it very low on the box down here, I could keep applying a force without it moving up into some maximum where that force then exceeds the force of friction and then it would start to slide. The second thing that I might do instead though is to apply the force high up at the top like here and if that force is less than the maximum force of friction then it won't slide. I won't have sliding but I might still get tipping. And that's what it's really asking about here. What's the minimum that, can be, that must be applied to cause it to tip? So I'm gonna increase that force to some point where I get tipping, but it hasn't yet exceeded the force of friction because otherwise it would slide and then I wouldn't get the tipping. So there has to, it has to be in between there. It has to be less than that maximum force of friction and I'm applying it high up such that I get the tipping. And so that force of friction is acting down at the bottom and I really have a natural tipping point then right here at that corner. It's gonna tip about that corner. And so the force I apply at the top is going to torque it about that pivot point in this direction so that I have a positive torque. But weight of gravity wants to pull it downwards in this direction, and so that's causing a negative torque. And the other forces are right here at the pivot point. So in fact, in my equation, those two will both drop out. I've set that up again down below so that I can show here now. I've got that pivot point and for each of these, they're either acting in the x direction or the y direction. But they are at an angle relative to my pivot point. So this would be my radius, radial distance at the point of where that force is being applied. But this distance here is actually my r perpendicular. So this is the distance, the perpendicular distance relative to that force. So this is my R perpendicular for mg. But this is mg if I label it properly. And this is my force F up here. And this distance then, that R perpendicular is going to be equal to half the length of the box because it's acting in the middle. My center of mass is at the middle of the box, it's cubic, so it's the same in all directions. And so my, I've shown up, it's shown up here that this is equal to, an, um, the total length is L. So this one is an L by two. Similarly, for the force that's being applied, I would have an R that would be reaching all the way up here to this corner, that would be the, the total R at the, to the point of where that force is being applied. 
but instead my r perpendicular is actually this distance over here. So this now is the r perpendicular for the force f. And that distance is equal to L. And so rather than breaking the force down into a parallel component and a perpendicular component, I've actually instead gone and found the moment arm, so the R perpendicular, for each of those forces. And they're nice, e easy numbers because of the length of the box. So let's go ahead then and plug that in. So the sum of the torques going to be equal to zero. And here then I have the force of friction being applied with a moment arm of zero because of where I've applied my origin, which I should label there. I've also got the normal force again acting at a moment arm of zero. I've got the applied force acting at a distance of L. So that's my R perpendicular for that force. And then I've got an mg where my r perpendicular for it is an L over 2. And all of that is equal to 0. But again, these two conveniently drop out because of the way I've defined my pivot point. And I'm left then with a force equal to mg over 2. So plugging in all of my values, I get 101 newtons. And I know that that should be less than that should be less than Fs max, less than the maximum force of friction based on the coefficient of static friction before slipping. But 101 newtons should be enough, or anything that exceeds that will be enough to cause tipping because I'm now going to exceed the weight that is acting at a shorter moment arm, in fact, half the moment arm, so notice that the weight of the box would be 203 newtons, but it has half the moment arm. It acts at an L over 2. And so I can have twice that force, or half that force, pardon me, I can have half that force, 101 newtons, acting at twice the moment arm. And those two will balance each other out in terms of torque. Anything greater than that, anything greater than 101 newtons, and now I'm going to cause tipping. But you'll notice that it's also then, if I go, and I don't, this is just additional, if I go and look at the sum of my fx's, and so to not be moving, this tells me that my force must be less, must be equal to the static friction force, and that must be less than or equal to the maximum, which I know is equal to mu s times the normal. And from the sum of the Fy's, I know that the normal force is balancing the weight, therefore it's equal to the weight. And so I can actually see that the maximum frictional force will be 114 newtons. And indeed, the force up above is 101 newtons, so it's less than 114 newtons, and it won't slide. And so the minimum horizontal force that must be applied to the top of the container to cause tipping is 101 newtons. And as I showed a step further, the maximum it can be before it would start slipping would be 114 newtons.